Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. Back in 2017, based on the trends in Arctic sea ice, I, I thought that there was a high probability that there would be no sea ice in a September by within five years, so by 2022 or so. And since 2017, especially with the patterns of melt in the Arctic uh, this year, I would have to lower that probability um, significantly, but to what, I'm not sure exactly. You'll have to kind of follow along with this video as I go through the different factors that are affecting the, the Arctic sea ice. So I'll get right into the data and have a look at it, but some of the key things are when the ice was thicker, there was a lot of multi-year ice around. The melting regime, the patterns, the dynamics of the movement of the ice, etc. Um, seem to make the ice disappear a lot faster than the uh, models were showing. Now, the, the multi-year sea ice is almost completely gone, as I'll show you. So that leaves just first-year ice, which is a lot thinner. And there's a lot of different factors that occur. First of all, you know, when the multi-year ice goes and as the ice disappears around the perimeter of the Arctic Ocean, so the only ice remaining is left more in the center, the dynamics changes pretty much completely. First of all, there's very little export um, through the Fram Strait or into the Atlantic, uh, there, there, you know, even through the Canadian Archipelago because there's less and less ice in that region. The ice is more confined towards the center of the Arctic Ocean. As you go to um, above 80 degrees, 80 degree latitude uh, up to the North Pole, the angle of the sun, of course, gets um, more um, glancing incidence. So the solar insulation on that area is much, much less. So there's no export. The surface melt seems to be um, much smaller um, as you get above 80 degree north, then, for example, the ice that fringes around the land on the outer, outer parts of the um, Arctic Ocean. So we've defined sort of this blue ocean event or no sea ice as less than 1 million square kilometers because it was thought that the thick ice, and it's still thought, you know, most scientists think that when there is uh, a so-called blue ocean event, when there, although they call it different things, um, the only ice left will be, uh, will be almost like fast ice that is stuck to the land around the edges or ice in the Canadian Archipelago Islands. But the latitude of those islands is, uh, the, the latitude of those regions is about 70 degrees north. There's still lots of solar energy there in the summer. There's still lots of melting. This, the angle of the sun isn't so steep there as it is, say, north of 80. So so it's not clear to me. I mean, the, maybe in, in the so-called blue ocean event, that million square kilometers of ice will be circling the North Pole, say north of, you know, say 85 degrees latitude north. That'll be the only ice left, very, very thin ice, very little surface melt. Um, if there's a lot of, um, uh, it depends on the, the, the ocean water temperature and the stratification if the hot water is kept below and the cold water is just under the ice that ice could actually be um, existing there for for longer than we think because we're going into a different regime and of course you know the thinner the ice is the quicker it grows because when you get thicker and thicker ice the the ice is a good insulator so the rate of ice um, formation you know will will depends greatly on the thickness. The thicker the ice, the slower the ice will, will grow. Um, and uh, also, when you have thicker ice, you pretty much separate the um, regimes of, of ice melting from the surface and ice melting from below. But when the ice gets thinner and thinner and thinner, you get a lot of light penetration through the ice um, and as the ice gets thinner, that affects the, the water temperature next to the ice. And it's kind of related, like the, there, a lot more heat can go down through the ice from the air and uh, heat up the water just under the ice. The ice is thinner and it's much more transparent. So there's, there's lots of different effects that, that come into play. 
like I've always said, the devil is always in the details. So I want to, I'm, you know, this video and the next uh, few probably are going to be talking all about sea ice is the main thing. But, you know, we're talking about a climate system and there's lots of things that are related. So I'll talk about some of the other significant um, things that, you know, may or may not, most of them are related to the ice, but perhaps not all of them. So let's get right into the uh, details here. So this is um, this is the most recent um, plot from the National Snow and Ice uh, Data Center, NSIDC. So this is the Arctic sea ice extent. So it's the area of ocean with at least 15% sea ice. Okay, so you can have 15% sea ice, 85% open water, and it's included in this number. The dashed line is the previous, is the record minimum, and you can see it bottoming out on September 16th. Um, actually, um, September 16th, uh, right here. Okay, um, sorry, right over here, set a record low. Now, this year we were well below, and then we we're above, and below, and below, and then we, we basically, the extent stalled out here. Um, you know, sort of first week of August to second week of August, you know, it really flattened out. The, the extent loss really decreased and the curve flattened out. Looked like this was almost completely flat here. Then there was another dip and it's flattened out again. And we'll only see, you know, in the next few weeks whether this is a minimum or whether it's going to drop a little bit more. But it's certainly no contest for the 2012 number. And this was um, a big surprise to many people. You know, uh, many people at this point obviously think, well, maybe we'll set a new uh, minimum um, sea ice extent, you know, another record. And other years aren't shown here, but, you know, there's other curves that are coming down to about this level. So that's the key thing. Um, if you look at the, you know, where the ice distribution, where the ice is, this is the median ice edge, 1981 to 2010. This is what we have um, this year where the ice is. Um, and you can look at the concentration. Um, and uh, so basically, um, you know, that 15% level, less than 15% ice um, in these regions, blue regions. And then this is how we define the extent. And you can see, you know, some regions here have 100% ice concentration, but there's you know, most of the ice here, there's gaps, like this would be 40% ice, 60% water, for example, um, this sort of color, okay? Um, and uh, while I'm on here, we can look at the, uh, look at the Antarctica. Um, this is the medium ice edge, and here, so we're within it in some regions and extending outside of it in other regions. Um, sea ice concentration and here. So we're not setting records right now. 2018, you know, had some significant dips and set records for, um, the, for, for uh, you know, as, as the ice in, um, you know, as in, in terms of the uh, uh, extent of the Antarctic sea ice. Okay, so of course, you know, it's the opposite pole. So as we set a minimum in the Arctic, we set a maximum in the Antarctic. Okay, so this article uh, on, that came out a week or so ago, September, summer's not over until the bottom melt ends, okay? So, so it talks about the, basically, the Arctic sea ice extent was tracking at record low levels in July and August, but then the pace of the ice loss slowed considerably after the middle of August, despite above average air temperatures over much of the Arctic Ocean. Okay, so, you know, some people have said, well, maybe it's all of the fires in the um, Siberian, um, the peat and the permafrost. Uh, maybe that smoke's going up and cooling the Arctic and that's slowed down the sea ice melt. But that doesn't appear to be the case. The air temperatures in the Arctic have still been setting um, temperature records. So, um, okay, so this article, I'll let you can just go to the National Snow and Ice data center and, and, and read this article. A couple of the key things I want to point out are, um, this is the curve, Ar this is the Arctic sea ice extent in August. Okay, the August average sea ice extent. 
you know, through the year. So the trend is still sharply down. Here we are in, in 2019. Um, but th this is a very interesting curve because there is a lot of dynamics going on. So this is from this is a, a particular region called the Beaufort Sea. Um, this is data from a while ago, but the, it, 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 it points out some interesting things. First of all, the ice thickness, as you, the ice thickness increases all through the winter. The water's cold, the ice is still getting thicker and thicker, and this is actually the negative values here are growth of the ice on the, um, on the, the bottom, like, uh, so this is this is this is bottom melt here. Well, bottom, it's negative, so it's bottom growth of ice here. You know, and the rate is in centimeters per day. And then we come and we reach this point, um, and we start losing. This is the summer now, so we start losing sea ice um, from melt on the bottom. Okay, so that's the the light blue bars here. The surface melt starts up here and increases, you know, reaches a maximum, and then it starts to decrease. So surface melt peaks on August 1st, okay? Um, and peak bottom melt was two weeks later on August 15th. Surface melting ended on August 24th. Bottom melting continues until October 24th. So there's still, um, so, so basically, um, the ice is growing on the surface and the ice is still decreasing on the bottom and as long as the ice continues to go down the the overall um, thickness and, and extent basically as long as that continues to decrease and the bottom melt is winning out but then eventually you know the bottom melt stops and and the ice starts growing as we go into the winter so this is a, that's a very interesting thing that's good to understand and there was a recent uh, conference by the International Glaciological Society, Sea Ice at the Interface. This meeting was just held um, a few weeks ago in, in Winnipeg. And lots of papers, lots of new information on this sort of thing. Okay, so, you know, remember how we lose ice in the Arctic. We can get it exported out of the Arctic. We can have it melting on the surface. We can have it melting on the bottom. Um, there's also the extent can be determined by the way the, the ocean currents and the wind patterns in the Arctic, and that, that'll make the ice less compacted or more compacted. But the regime is different because we've lost almost all of the, the um, multi-year um, sea ice. Okay, so this is a, a, a good article. And again, this is the, um, the curve here. The flattening out here was extremely surprising, took a lot of people by surprise. It was, it was quite unexpected. Okay. The conference, the Winnipeg uh, Symposium that I was referring to in the previous article, basically, you know, you can just look at some of the, the, the titles here. This only gives the, the abstracts, but um, sea ice and snow interaction on ice, Restoring Arctic ice with strategically placed albedo enhancing reflective glass beads. Interesting idea. Um, so this is by a, a uh, group called Ice 911, and their mission is to restore the Arctic sea ice to keep the reflectivity in the Arctic so that we don't tip over into, uh, you know, no sea ice in the Arctic and, and huge um, amounts of warming there. You know, you can kind of scroll through so it's all about the sea ice in both the Arctic and the Antarctic, and there's all kinds of, you know, different uh, papers, how we measure uh, ice sat data on measuring heights and freeboards of the ice, so the amount of, of the ice is above the surface of the, of, of the water, and that can give you an idea. You can then determine the, if you know the density, you can determine the thickness of the ice. Um, and there's all kinds of stuff here, all kinds of papers. And uh, also there's a couple papers that are referred to in the National Snow and Ice Data Center work, you know, this one and this one. So I'll stop here and continue. Thanks for listening.